Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out this video. It's your girl LB. Welcome to my channel, Watch With Me LB, where I give you fun, fresh, and funny rants, reviews, and recaps on my favorite movies and TV shows. We made it, y'all. I can't believe we made it, y'all. Season two, episode one, House of the Dragon, okay? I am looking at myself in this camera and realizing that I look like a sexy mime, okay? All I need is like a baguette and a beret, baby, and I could just try to get myself out of a box. But that's all right, that's all right. If you haven't, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell for the notifications. And if you're so inclined, please share this video and help me grow my channel, okay? Here's the thing. I am, let me just right out the gate, okay? Right out the gate, I'm disappointed because all of them, and I know the book readers all too, okay? I know the book readers all because the book readers say, girl, get your, get your noggin together, okay? Get your little snack, sit down and be prepared, okay? Because blood and cheese is coming in and about to wreck up shop, okay? And then when blood and cheese came, I was like, ooh. Like, I was worried. I was scared, and I was like, Lord, what they about to do? And they hit the scene, and I was like, Mer. But let's talk about it, y'all. Let's get in here and do it, because, you know, we got some mess. We got some murder. We got a pompous princess who just can't be beyond reproach with her ragged self. Lord, I hate, I, when I tell you I hate Allison with a real, like, a, a real, like, deep, radiating hate that I have for that character and I just love that so much for me. Okay, let's talk about it, y'all. Season two brings us to a place that we are very, very familiar with and that is my home away from home. Not even, not even, okay? But we are at Winterfell and we see how back in the day, how folks were chosen for the Night's Watch, okay? All the men got in the, in the courtyard and they gathered up and they pulled rocks out of a, a boot or something, child. And if you got a white rock, you get to stay home and get married and have children and stuff. But if you got a black rock, I had to go up there to the wall okay so they were like this is not a death sentence this is an honor and i'm glad you feel that way stalkerinos because i would have been devastated okay so that's the introduction that we get to the season but we open with that because you know when we last left you know the Rhaenyra had sent her children to go and you know spread the word baby we about to it's about to go we got to go head up and i need your support okay so you know we know what happened to poor luke R.I.P. to a real one, but Jace is over there with the Starks and he's over there on the wall, right? So he's going up in the elevator that we've seen many, many times before in Game of Thrones and he's talking to Ned Stark's 13 times great granddaddy. He got a Stark vibe on him, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of sullen because it's fucking cold. So I get that. And he got a half up, half down. And I said, okay, you know what? You live in that Stark life and it's a tradition. And I appreciate that. You know, Jace ain't really been nowhere. First of all, Jace pulled up at the wall, baby, with a beautiful tan. Cheekbones is just as apple as they want to be. And I was like, boy, you don't even know. You don't even know where you at. You don't even know what you about to see, baby. It is some shenanigans over there on that wall and you coming in there with your little tan and your little cloak looking all adorable hey, you know we about to go to war pledge your you you know your support to my mama and we really could use some troops you know nasdaq 13 times great granddaddy say um excuse me bro i don't know if you know what we up here doing we're not just up here for shits and gigs baby we don't just piss off this wall for fun okay we out here trying to protect the world okay because winter is coming and so you know that doesn't really mean anything to jace but when he got up to the top of that wall and saw what was on the other side of that wall and old boy was like listen my great, my granddaddy came up here with your granddaddy and they rolled up here on dragons and your dragons wouldn't go even go across this wall. Baby, that's a nuclear weapon with wings and he ain't gonna go over here. That's what we got to guard, okay? So I can't send you my men. Now I can send you all the grandpas to meet and, you know, have coffee and stuff in the morning and we could just tell them that they're gonna go. They bout it. Now they really can't fight. They just, oh, we can send you 2,000 old people and that's the best I could do. I appreciate you coming on up. But somebody comes up there with a scroll or a raven came and of course he gets the news that his brother done gone on home to glory. Rhaenys, the queen that never was, is coming back on her dragon and we finally get to see that old piece of trash that I love so much, Damon Targaryen. Damon Targaryen got his boots on, baby, and his half up and half down. He got dog sister and he is ready to roll. So he tells Rhaenys, hey, um, I know you just came back and I know you was doing your thing. Appreciate that, but get back on her because we about to go kill uh, Vagar right quick. Rhaenys is like, um, mm, I, who? You talking French, baby. Who is we? Oh, I got to go eat. My dragon got to eat. I'm tired and I'm going to lay down. Damon starts going. Oh, he's very upset that he got to just stay there and wait on Rhaenyra because Rhaenyra is grieving her child. And Damon don't even see that because Damon, when I tell you trash, Father's Day just passed. 
he wouldn't get not nary a raven. I wouldn't send him no dried goat meat. I wouldn't do nothing for Damon if he was my dad. Trash. Horrible father. Rhaenys is trying to make him understand what Rhaenyra is going through. And he just is so annoyed that he's, first of all, he's annoyed that he's not in charge. And he's annoyed that he has to wait on the queen's command. He got to wait on his wife and he don't like that shit. And you can go kill Vagar. And then Rhaenys was like, did the queen say that? And then Damon was like, I don't know what the queen said because I don't know where the queen at. She out here tripping. She's mourning, but she need to come on and be a queen. We at war, baby. She's out here exposed. He just ready to go start some shit. He ready to go chop some heads off and just, you know, beat some people up with random objects. Damon gonna tell her, well, if you would have did what you were supposed to do when you had Aemon and all them at the thing, at the coronation ceremony, I forgot what they called it, then none of this would have been the issue. You could have burned his whole line up to a crisp, baby, like some cracklings. You could have just stopped this whole thing and that little boy would be alive. Rhaenys, much better than me. Me and I know Damon would have whooped my ass. You understand? But there are certain things you just got to you just got to sacrifice for. Cause who you talking to? Don't talk to me like that. My name is Paul, and that's between y'all. Okay, I'm family, and I'm a roll with the silver hair people. I'm not gonna start no war though. Okay, I'm I'm a, I don't even have no children out here. My line about to just die the hell off. I ain't got no chaps. What you want me to do? He didn't even say anything. She just walked off. And then Damon was like, "Ride with me. It's a command." Old girl walked off with the coldest little medieval saunter and said, "Would that you were the king? Like, bitch, you not you can't tell me to do nothing. You don't have no power over me. I'm about to go take a bath." So now we over there with chocolate drop Lord Corliss. He's checking on his ship and he's down there and he meets a man named Alan. Now when he meets Alan, something I don't know what it was. It, well, I guess I do know what it was. It was the way that Lord Corliss was talking to Alan. Alan is somebody. I don't know if we supposed to know who Alan is. I don't know if he knows who Alan is. I don't know if Alan knows something different about something. Somebody knows some things, okay? Alan did pull Lord Corliss to safety. So I don't know if that's what it was, but it was something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm keep my eye on him because a big ass bald black man ain't just gonna pull up in the show and then just leave and never come back. Like Alan was giving Lord Corliss an update on the ship. And he was like, it's gonna take a little minute now to fix the ship. I know y'all got some stuff y'all gotta do and it's, you know, it's it's go time, but I, you know, it's gonna take a, a long time to fix up the ship to be, you know, bad already. He also gave Lord Corliss uh, like a sword or something that he had commissioned for poor little Luke before he met his untimely demise, Lord and mercy. So, you know, it was kind of sad because, uh, you know, even though Lord Corliss knew that them chaps wasn't his biological children, he loved them boys. Like he was like, listen, I'm gonna give it all to you. That's what papas do, okay? I'm a papa at the end of the day, okay? My son is gone, my daughter's dead. All I got is these illegitimate ass children. So that's what I'm gonna hold on to. So the only thing I could think is that they brought him back because he must be like a bad, Alan, I mean, he must be like a bastard or something. I don't know how many bastards he got, but I feel like if he is a son to Corliss, then there go your heir. Like they're gonna try to make that work or whatever. Let's put a pin right there. Let me know if you read the books, if I'm right or not, because I feel like I'm right. <laughs> so now, unfortunately, we got to go over there by Allison and her just despicable ass family, okay? So we get to see Helena Targaryen, who is the only serviceable, normal, even though she not Targaryen out of the bunch. She's the one I would wanna spend the most time with, even though I would be bored out of my mind because she would just tell me something that wouldn't come to pass for another six to seven business months, but I would definitely take heed. That is the problem with men in this show. They don't be listening to the women and the women just be trying to help and they don't, that's just, they just think they know better. That's all right, they're gonna see. So, so you know, she's in there doing her needlepoint with one of her little chaps and she got her little maids in there and her brother husband coming in and say, hey, where's my son? Where's your Harris? I wanna take him to the small council meeting cause you know, he gonna be king one day. Now, if you've ever taken a three-year-old anywhere, wherever that place is, they gonna make noise, they gonna touch something, they gonna ask you questions, they gonna disturb all of the peace. Why you would wanna bring that child to the small council meeting, the world would never know, child. She tell her brother husband, Aegon, on the way out, I'm scared, and he's like, you don't need to be scared. Ain't nobody gonna come over here messing with you. He think that she talking about, you know, the, the shenanigans that they in. No, no. She said, I'm scared about the rats. And so he was like, okay, all right. Don't nobody listen to Helena. Don't, had, had, they listened to her. Her brother-in-law slash brother would have had his eyeball today and we wouldn't have been in no shenanigans. 
Y'all gonna learn to listen to Elena, baby. That's the medieval Luna love good. She not gonna lead you astray. You're not gonna understand what the hell she's talking about. You sit down and put a little pen to parchment, you might be able to get it together and figure it out. But they don't be wanna, they don't be wanna listen. Very next scene, would you believe the pious princess, Queen Mother Allison, is getting that box eight by Sir Christian Cole. I'm confused because, you know, Allison, girl, you are just, you damn near nun, Allison. So what are you doing? And the last I checked, that's against the rule. Hey, you are pious, and how dare anybody do anything that they want to do that's not what you think they should do because then you're going to go ahead and start a whole war and millions of people got to die because you was upset about it and you stole a throne and stuff. <sighs> I really don't... <laughs> This is a fictional character, and I'm very well aware of that, but I hate that bitch. I'm just gonna tell you straight up. So she gonna walk over to the community dick, also known as Christian Cole, and tell him that they can't do that no more. They can't have sex no, you know, they can't kick it no more. Ma'am, give it a rest. <laughs> like, please, go, go, go embroider something. Go, go do, go do something. Go check on something. Go lift something up and put it somewhere else. Just do something different with yourself because we can't do it again. Okay, all right. He was like, all right, bet. And so he asked her to help put his cape back on. Same thing Rhaenyra did when he was community dick for her. She put, she put his little cape back on. Put your own motherfucking cape on. Put your own cape on. I hate him too. Aegon bring that little boy to the damn small council meeting and they trying to talk about life and death situations and the little boy playing with the little ball that they got to put in the dish to start the meeting. And he playing with, uh, what you call them, Lannister's balls. Now, you know Lannister's don't even like children. You know, they trying to talk about, you know, strategy. Such and such is marching up. Such and such is going to give us some troops. And, you know, the gullet, they doing things down there and it's cutting off, you know, sheep residue from the north. You know what I'm saying? Like they coming up, they took, you know, giving updates. Allison gonna say, well, did Rhaenyra get my letter? Did she respond, bitch? First of all, bitch, bitch, do you, do, let, let me, the girl, listen. You was ready to murder half the whole left side of the kingdom when your child lost an eyeball. Do you think that a raggedy ass letter is gonna make it okay that your son literally ate her son off a dragon? What are you even referring to? Like, that's what I'm saying. I really don't like that lady. It's like, it's like her little noggin don't even match. She not even a product of incest, so she should be a little, have a little more up here. Has she received my girl? Let me, all right. Oh, now we get our first sighting of Clubfoot Lord Laris this season, and I hate him, but I also love him, because that's messy, okay? He knows all the things all the time, and he is going to be somebody that I'm keeping my eye out for. I know this season, he's going to do some shenanigans. I already know his shenanigans about to be off the meat rack because right out of the gate, he tells Allison, yeah, girl, I came over here to see about you early. I was trying to tell you something, but your lady, one of your little ladies said you were indisposed. Like the way he said it, he was like, I knew you was getting that cookie. I already know because you know he know everything. He moves slow and just be listening and stuff and got all the teeth. So he tells her, you know, you know, we had a little problem with some communication amongst the staff. You know what I'm saying? We had some traitorous staff in there. And so I, what I did was I rounded everybody up and I killed them all. Okay. And then I replaced them with people that'll be loyal to you, which also means loyal to me because they're going to be watching you and then reporting back to me. That's going to be very interesting. Okay. I don't know if he's going to be expecting some feet like he did last time, or if he gonna expect something more, but he's gonna expect something. He's gonna want something. Poor Rhaenyra, she just been standing looking off in the distance cause her child is dead, okay? And the killing part is, she can't even give her baby a proper burial because the fucking dragon ate it. So she, you know, just out here looking, pondering like baby. So she's out here looking off into the distance and she see like the little fisherman people see a dragon wing in the water. And so she fly her big ass dragon down there and almost run over 45 people trying to see what actually was down there. She sees poor Luke little cloak and stuff and she just is broken hearted child. <sighs> so her little baby and she just told him, she was like, be brave, you know what I'm saying? Oh. Last season, she was like, be brave and you know, I'm gonna teach you how to do it and you don't have to be scared. And he really wanted to be brave, too, poor thing. He was like, I am a child. I am 13 years old, babe. I don't wanna, I don't wanna do this. And she convinced him to go. And now he did, Lord have mercy. I really think that I'm gonna like Aemon, even though he's a Targaryen and he is the offspring, just the demon seed of Alicent. I really think I'm gonna like him 
because he's dumb. Like, he's just not, he's very funny and he is also stupid. And that's a great combination for TV. I love that. I love that for me. So he's listening and like, you know, a little hearing where they come and like, you know, share their little grievances or whatever. Little townsfolk say, listen, hey, um, Your Honor, your, your Majesty, you know, we don't have any sheeps and stuff because, you know, y'all took a lot of our sheeps, you know, for your dragons to eat and stuff, you know, and I'm just saying because of that, we just really in a bad way. And then Aegon was like, we'll give you sheep back, it's all good. And then his granddaddy was like, no, we not. Like, <laughs> he was like, Stop telling the people that. And then another one got up there. And he was like, hey, my name is Hugh and I'm a blacksmith. And, uh, you know, y'all pay us on the back end for stuff, but everything is very expensive, baby. Inflation in the year 100 is out of pocket, okay? So I was wondering if y'all could pay us up front. And it was, he was like, yay, hey, we'll pay y'all up front. And I, I don't have to, I was like, no, we will, no. We are at war, boy. Like, we got to keep all the cheap and gold ourselves. What you talking about? But Hugh is somebody, too, because they, like, lingered on you a little long. And it seemed like you probably going to be pissed off at somebody for something. I don't know what, but I'm going to keep my eye on him, too. So, Lord Corliss got all his little people out, you know, running on the ships and making sure everything is good, okay? So, they go on the ship and find Masaria, you know, the white worm, and she's on there, like, sneaking away. And so, Damon brings her in there, and it's like, ah. Oh, Look at what we have here. And he's just like talking to her and like accusing her of like, you know, working for Otto Hightower. And she, and she was like, baby, listen, I'm damn near a sell sword. I don't give a damn. Like if somebody going to pay me, I'm going to give them what they're asking me to get. I'm, listen, I'm a normal ass person. I don't have nothing to do with y'all rich people shit. That's rich people shit. You, you and me, not the same. Don't come over here with all of that. I like Masaria because she not scared. So baby Rhaenyra comes home. All right. And we at about the 40 minute mark in a one hour episode. And we haven't heard Rhaenyra say boo cat dog. And we see her and Damon have a little, a, a tiny little moment of like, you know, comfort and solitude and support. They put their foreheads on each other. That's the most damn it gonna be able to get you unless they give you some dick. You know, they have a little, <laughs> I'm out of pocket for that. Oh my God. It's something the matter with me too. Lord have mercy. Anyway, and the only thing we hear her say this whole episode is, I want Aemon Targaryen. That's it and that's all. It ain't no more talking. Looking at her face when she said it, it looked like Emma Darcy lost a child. It looked like they were just grieving for real in real life. First of all, can we just talk about Emma Darcy and... <sighs> mm -hmm. Because you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Because, you know, they they just make me... You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> wait a second. What is happening? What's going on? And they don't like... Ooh, girl. See what I'm saying? They got me with the gibberish. They be looking good, baby. I just, I, <laughs> let's move on. Because I'm going to just... You know what I mean? Paul Jace come home and he trying to hold it together. He trying to give his mom a report about all the things he was able to do before his life just went into shambles. Couldn't hold on to it. He just broke down crying in his mama's arms. Now I do love to see Rhaenyra. She loves her boys. And as a boy mom, yeah. And it was great to see her have that kind of support, right? Because she wasn't gonna get it from Damien. She ain't got no parents, she don't have no friends, okay? So it was good to see her be able to let it out and be able to have somebody to embrace her and be able to embrace somebody else because they were both devastated, baby. Just, oh, Lord. How do I say goodbye, you know what I'm saying, to all that we had? The good times that made us laugh, they outweighed the bad, okay? And I hope we get to see, what's the rest of the song? <laughs> <laughs> I'm childish. Now, y'all, we get a really cool scene where Allison going to the set. You know, she goes to the, to pray, right? And she's, like, calling the names of all the people that she's praying for and that have passed on. She called her mama name, called her husband name, and she got nerve to call Lucera's name. So she feels bad about it, but why? Yeah. Too little, too late. The lords of the seven, I don't know if it's one lord or multiple lords, the old gods and the new, they don't give a damn. Shut up. At the same time that's happening, poor Rhaenyra is having like a memorial service because she can't have a funeral for the child because poor Luke, you know, we don't have Luke. They all putting something in the funeral pyre that belong to Luke or they had from Luke or that, you know, they think of when they think of Luke. And I forgot, I don't, was that Rhaenyra's child? Did they have a third child? Yeah, they did, right, hon? Oh, did, I can't 
can't know. I don't know. It was another little boy there. Did that little boy have blonde hair? I don't know. Comment down below and let me know who that third little boy, that second little boy was that was over there because, but you know who wasn't there? Damon Raggedy. Now you know where he was though, was starting some shit over there at Allison House. You already know when Damon put a cloak on, somebody's gonna die. He goes over there to Allison them house in a cloak and he goes to the gate and they got the gold cloaks. You know, the gold cloaks, that was his little crew. You know, he had made his own little gang and gave him some money. Like, hey, let me in. You know what I'm saying? I need somebody to go kill Damon, right? So there's a big burly dude with a beaver stuck down his throat, baby. Voice scratchy. Let's him in and brings him to this guy. He's a rat catcher. Over there at Addison's house, she don't keep a clean house. There's dirt over there, they got rats, okay? And the guy says he knows like the ins and outs of the of Allison them house and all of the back tunnels that Damon snuck Rhaenyra out of to go do incestual stuff in the streets when she was little. You know, remember the tunnels, right? Okay, so. He said he knows all of that, like he knows his yam, okay? So, you know, evidently he must know it very well, child. Because what the hell else he gonna do is just get to know himself, child. Anyway, guy is gonna go with the big burly dude with the beaver down his throat, and they gonna go and kill Eamon. The guy is like, okay, so what if we can't find him? And then they don't say nothing. They don't show Damon's response. To that question. Big burly dude with the beaver in his, the beaver down his throat and a rat catcher dude, they pretend to be rat catchers. At the same time, we see Eamon and Community Dick in a room talking, right? They just like trying to hatch out a plan like, and they like commiserating together because, you know, two miserable people just gonna find each other, okay? So Otto Hightower comes in and it's like, Community Dick, you can go. So Otto Hightower says, hey, Eamon, you need to relax. Okay, I understand you want to be about that action, but you don't know all the ins and the outs from the rooter to the tutor. So you could be out here messing stuff up. So just don't be making no plans that don't involve the king and don't involve me. You know, we got to be a team. You know what I'm saying? Because literally we couldn't be no more closely related. Okay, so let's act like that. And so of course, Eamon don't want to hear nothing because he know every damn thing. Now over there back to the big burly dude with the beaver down his throat and the rat catcher dude, right? We saw them in... Alice in them house, right? And we also saw Eamon in Allison house. Like, okay, somebody's about to die. Now they have a dog with them. One thing I don't play about is harming animals and harming children. Everybody else is fair game in the show. I don't give a damn. You you, you do something bad to an animal or a child and you gonna have to see me, okay? So they, you know, get to a certain part in the castle and they getting ready to get close to where they gotta go. And old boy kicks the motherfucking dog. There ain't no other solution, die. They end up getting into like the queen's, you know, habitat. I don't know what the hell, I don't know what it was. So they were looking for Eamon, right? They didn't find Eamon. They found Paul Helena and her chap, the little small one, hemmed up Helena. And she was like, hey, um, I got, you know, I got money. I got like, you got his necklace. It's worth like a lot of money. The big guy was like, nah, they ain't here to get her. Like, what you doing? Like, that's not a part of the plan. So the little small dude is like, listen, we couldn't get Eamon, but this the whole ass queen right here. Like, I'm sure this will do the job. Like, tell us which one of these children are little boys. You know, they talk Aries, they look just alike, and they twins, child. So she pointed, and then the big one was like, nah, she lying. And then the little one was like, nah, she pointed to the boy, she telling the truth. And they proceed to cut the little boy head off. Dead, death, immediately. Hang them, strip them, quarter, feather them, tar them, feather them, whatever you say, do it immediately. Because that little baby wasn't doing nothing. He was just a badass three year old. That wasn't, you know, it's not his fault. His mama, his daddy, brother, and sister, like, that ain't got nothing to do with him. He ain't to be here. Why you did that to that little baby like that? Helena is in shock and she grab up the little girl and she runs away. I thought, I, girl, I was so worried that she was gonna fall down the stairs, baby, because baby Luna Lovegood don't look like she just too light on her feet. I thought she was gonna fall with little baby Luna Lovegood. I thought we're gonna take a tumble down the stairs like Charlotte. They made their way to Allison's room. Y'all, why Allison was in there getting her cheeks clapped? Excuse me clapping Christian cold cheeks. Okay, she was on top. Miss, I can't do this no more. Miss seven, go to church, pray for the people as inch. I, mm. Allison said, well, girl, baby, what happened? Helena hit the floor. She said, they killed the boy. And the look on Allison's face was like pure shock, right? That's where the episode ends, all right? I just, listen, I ain't gonna hold you, y'all. I was disappointed in the blood and the cheese. Unless they gonna have blood and cheese do something like else, 
I was super disappointed because one, I didn't read up to find out what blood and cheese did because everybody that had read the books was like, yo, blood and cheese gonna be here because they saw either blood or and or cheese baby in one of the, the posters. Everybody was like, well, who the hell is blood and cheese? What's going on? And so, you know, if you didn't read the books, you obviously didn't know. I specifically asked somebody, I was like, okay, is it gonna be like the red wedding kind of terrible? Or is it gonna be like, less than that okay which way is it greater than or less than which way we talking about and they were like nah it's greater than and i was like yo like and so when i saw blood and cheese come up in the very first episode i was like damn right out the gate we got blood this is gonna be good and then i was like mm, terrible what they did right but i don't even know that little boy like that you know what i'm saying i didn't have a chance to get invested in that little boy all i saw was that he was at the um the small council meeting tearing shit up seemed like he needed some activity books or something like a little you know what i'm saying like he needed something to do so i don't know that little boy it was terrible what happened to him but i don't know that little boy like that it's a catalyst obviously for sure for sure but it just didn't have that same yeah like i thought it was gonna have comment down below and let me know what you thought about the whole blood and cheese thing okay and also comment down below and let me know how much you hate allison Ooh, i cannot wait to talk to y'all in the comments i'll talk to y'all later bye